Oh yeah. Talk about the channel. So we are in a Golf 2 litre TDI Mark 6 2011. And we're having persistent DPF, I wouldn't say issues, I would say inconveniences. Um, where this car, as I've mentioned before when I've done another video on DPFs, it doesn't go on the motorway. So it only really does short journeys and then every three weeks or so I have to take it up the motorway to regen. I've tried the JLM, the preventative in tank additive which worked while it was in the tank and then a couple of weeks later it um it threw a bit of a wobbler actually it came up with it we're doing a regen and it said it was taking too long so then it went into limp dip mode reset it it's been fine since but i'm gonna try and clean the dpf again with some different stuff in a slightly different manner and i've also got a new scan tool to, well, to try and investigate any issues a little bit more and, well, we'll have a look at it on live data and stuff with that. So first, let's have a look at this anyway. Just nice and carefully remove this security seal so we can open the box and see what's inside. And now we've made our way past that, we can see that it actually comes in a nice carry case. And inside the nice carry case, we have some stuff there that we're not really interested in at the moment. And we have a scanner, which looks and feels nice, actually. And underneath it, we've got various leads and attachments, which are for probably doing stuff way more complicated than I'm ever going to need it for. So let's just forget about them for now. So let's turn it on and see if it's actually got any battery power. Yes. And I think I'm probably going to have to make an account and sign into all that. So I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll come back when it's done. And actually, I know how wrong. It seems to be working straight out of the box. So I haven't, I've just turned it on and it seems to be working. So let's plug it into the car. Now this sticks on the back with a magnet, which is quite nice actually. So let's put that in to here. Oh, let's get connected. Yes. And so now we're connected, we can go through some menus. So we've got quite a lot to go out. This this machine does a lot. I mean, it's a bi-directional scanner. It's quite in-depth. Um, if we go on special functions and see what there is about the DPF, because that's what we're interested in, we've got... All this in special functions as well. Yeah, this this does this does do a lot. Um, I've gone past it, I think. Diesel engine special functions. So we've got we can check the DPF, see what it's saying. We've got DPF matching. So when we're done and we've cleaned it, we can tell it's had a new one. Uh, we can regen it through the machine, hopefully. Um, yeah. So let's go on to data stream. And we have got loads. Too many, really. So, let's look for DPF on here. Start the vehicle up. And so that wasn't really telling us anything. So I went back and searched for particle instead. Because then we get particle filter stuff. And, um, well... I think this is probably the most useful one. So if we look there, we've got raw value of the differential differential pressure. And if I rev it to, well, max of the soft limiter, we get about that much. So that is a good starting point. So when I've done the cleaning and everything, we can see what we get and see what differences it's actually made. I mean, it's not going to be high at the moment because we have no... DPF light on but I'm going to do it anyway and just see if we can improve it because like I said this car keeps on every few weeks has to be driven up the motorway to clear the DPF out now that's that's possibly not abnormal but I'm going to try and give it a good clean until it's had a new DPF and then see if that 
well, see if it does it again after that. And this is the stuff I'm going to use to clean it this time. And I'm actually going to read the instructions before I do it, which are there. So basically, I've got to insert this into the DPF from the, well, I'm going to use a pressure sensor. And then I leave it a few seconds or a minute or so. Then I start it for about 15 minutes. Then I drive it for a bit. And then if it doesn't perform a regen, then I have to make it perform a regen. So let's do that and see what happens. And if we make our way underneath the bonnet, then we can see, well, this is the pressure sensor. And that is the pipe. So I need to, well, I borrowed these nice specialist tools from the boot of my BMW. And I need to, uh, there's a little clamp on this pipe, which is gonna be quite awkward to get to with the wrong tools. And of course, you just about can't really get it off. So it's bringing back thermostat vibes, actually. When I did the thermostat and all the clips were just awful. So I'm gonna take this bolt out and hopefully then I can get some better access and remove this pipe nice and lovingly. And it seems to be specifically designed just to make it so you just about can't reach to get the pipe off. So as you can see, I've unplugged it and I'm hoping that this will come up here and now I've got a bit better access to it. Yes. And now we should be ready to put the contents of that tin into here. So I need to feed that down there as far as it'll go. which seems to be about that far. And if we can just double check at this point that this is the right place to put it because some cars have two different, well, two pressure sensors, one before and one after the DPF. We want to put it into the one before it. And if we look down there and pull that pipe, we can see that that is gonna dump that in right on top of the DPF, hopefully. Also, you've got to do this cold according to the destructions. So now I just need to keep on spraying that in bursts until it's empty and the DPF is then full of this stuff and I think that is it that's that's done so now I need to put all this back together yes so now all that is back together I'm supposed to start it and let it run for 15 minutes and we have a little bit of steam coming out, but not much else at the moment. And so, while I'm leaving it running, I'm just going to keep an eye on the live data to see if that value changes much. And I'm going to keep an eye out for a load of crap coming out the back of it, which last time I did this, um, it didn't until I drove it, which I've got to do after I've done this. I think we'll get it up to temperature first. And the pressure is in fact creeping down slowly. And we do have a little bit of smelly stuff coming out the back of it. And now we are at that low and we're up to temperature. So now we've got to go for a short drive. And um, it does seem to be still burning off. And it also appears that something has been ejaculated from the tailpipe. And a quick drive and quite a lot of smoke later, we are now the lowest it's been. So, so it's like, I think that was about 36 before. So that's lower, so it has worked. So now, I'm gonna finish it off by doing a regen. I wanna try to. And this has been serviced recently, so it should be all right, but always check the oil level before performing a regeneration process. I'm going to go into this and then I'm going to click that. And now, after answering loads of questions and doing loads of things it's told us to do, we are performing a regeneration process. And it stinks. But it seems to definitely be achieving something. I'd like to add as well, uh, static regen is sort of like a last resort. I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world to do, but you can kill the DPF or even blow the car up. Um, I mean, I've heard of that happening, but yeah, it's not common. But yeah, a, a static regen is only supposed to be done in certain conditions. So well, let's see what happens with it. And while it's doing it, which can take up to about 40 minutes, 
make sure to keep an eye on things like, well, your temperatures, your, your coolant temperature, um, and just make sure you're not going to damage anything by doing it because it is or can be quite hard on the engine. Make sure you don't do what you parked on dry grass or anything as well because it's going to get hot down there as well. So I've just got to wait for it to finish now. And now that seems to be complete and we survived it. Um, just near the end, the engine note did change when the rev stayed the same, which was a bit weird. And then the temperatures started dropping on the screen of here. So I think that's like a cool down period or something like that. So let's see what our pressures are. And everything does seem to be looking better, actually. If we look at the our uh, raw value, the one that we were paying attention to before, if I rev it, that's as high as it gets now. So that's a lot better. So I was, I was going to uh, tell the kite I had a new DPF, but I've decided against doing that because it hasn't had a new DPF. And um, so I think I'm going to leave it here. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the usual shit. If you've got any questions, just like I said, just drop a comment. Anyway, see you next time.